Hello, Amy Thomas Davis here. Welcome to our YouTube channel. I want to talk today about the spirit of prophecy, the prophetic culture, and what we can expect to see in this new day regarding uh, the prophetic. The current prophetic culture has been in crisis for quite some time. Uh, some prophesying false things, some people prophesying things they, you know, the good heart meaning well, but prophesying things that just simply will never happen. There are others that are prophesying to gain publicity or just to hear their own voice. It's, it's obviously been a mess. There are a handful of sound prophets prophesying the truth. Um, you know, there's going to be many more prophets rising up in this coming hour that will prophesy the true word of God. They will know the truth. They will eat the scroll and they will prophesy. Uh, there's been a, a big mess that has been going on everywhere and people are almost afraid to even listen to prophecy while others are absolutely obsessed with the next prophetic word that could be released. And I just want to address some of that today. Uh, I have a um, you can contact uh, the table at whitedoveministries.org. And I have a 11 biblical guidelines to avoid the chaos of crisis and to come into um, you know, a, a place of true prophecy. I've got these 11 guidelines available if you want to contact. Again, that's the table at whitedoveministries.org. And Warren will get you those 11 biblical guidelines. And I might go over them before this uh, video blog is over. I actually had intended to come and share specifically about that. But the Lord is bringing me in a, in a it's the same direction, but it, it's, it's a little bit different. And I'm going to read to you today from Ezekiel 3, Revelation 10, and Zechariah 10. And I want to talk to you today about this um this prophecy that's coming. There are a generation on the earth that will absolutely prophesy our new day. We know that we have recently transitioned and crossed over out of the old. We crossed over out of the old systems, the old way, the old torment. We have crossed over out of that captivity and we are walking in um, really, we're in this place of for many people feeling like, well, what now? I've crossed over, I'm crossing over, I'm leaving the old, but I'm not sure what the new looks like. Well, there are many that will begin to prophesy it and will go. They will see the, um, the word of the Lord. They will hear the word of the Lord. Recently, I had a dream and the Lord showed me that uh, there will be a day where they will rest and see. And another day will they were, where we will hear what the Spirit says to the church. So we will rest, we will see, and we will hear what He says. And we will prophesy what He has shown us and what we have heard from Him. We will do what we see the Father doing. We will prophesy what the Father says to prophesy. And that's the way it will be. And there's going to be, uh, the Lord is going to deal with um the those who are prophesying out of presumption or out of selfish ambition the lord is going to deal with it so that is why it has been so important for us to heal our hearts to make sure that we are coming to him and saying lord purify me make me holy even as you are holy that i might prophesy um, in regards to your holiness for he's holy he's good and there's none like him he is Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the God of all, creator, deliverer, lover of our soul. This is his hour. It is absolutely Omega time. He is Omega. We must prophesy according to Omega time. Hear what he's saying, see what he's doing and prophesy. I want to go ahead and go to Revelation 10. Let me pull it up here. If you have your Bible, pull to Revelation 10 with me. Verse 8 through 11, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read uh, quite a bit of scripture here in this video blog so I can pull all this together. And, and just, you know, I want you to try to really tune in here. This can't be one of those video blogs you listen to for five minutes and come back to. 
uh, take the time and dedicate the time to listen because the Lord is teaching us something. Because if we're gonna, if you're gonna be the one that's gonna prophesy this new day in, and you're gonna prophesy what is to come, and you're gonna be the one the Lord trusts, the one that the Lord chooses to eat the scroll. If you're gonna be the one that we need to understand a little bit about it, what it's gonna cost us, what it's gonna take, what it's maybe we can look at scripture and see what it might feel like to us when it's happening so that we can be courageous and prophesy. It's going to be necessary that we dig a little deeper in these scriptures and understand a little more completely. Because prophesying in this hour, we won't do it flippantly. We won't just go and say whatever comes to our mind. We have to prophesy according to His design, according to God's plan, according to Omega time. It's very important. So Revelation chapter 10 verse 8 says, Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and I said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. I want you to remember this part where it says it will make your stomach bitter because we're going to dive into this word bitter a little bit. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, 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 my stomach became bitter. There's that word again. And he said to me, you must prophesy again about many people, nations, tongues, and kings. It affects all. You must prophesy again. But I want to talk for a minute about that word bitter. But let's first go uh, to Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm going to read several verses from here. Chapter 3, starting in verse 1. I'll give you just a second to turn to that if you have your scripture. If you're driving, I'm going to go ahead and just read this. Ezekiel 3, verse 1. Move over, he said to me, son of man. Eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly, fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate it and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. And he said to me, son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. For you know, you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and hard language, but to the house of Israel. And it goes on. I'm going to go down to verse 10. It says this. He said to me, Son of man, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you. That means we better understand the truth, the true knowledge of God, the true knowledge of who he is, the true knowledge of the hour that we live in, the true knowledge of God. Receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and hear it with your ears. So he eats it. He receives it fully. He's to then hear it with his ears. And he says, and go get to the captives, to the children of your people and speak to them and tell them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Verse 12, then the spirit lifted me up and I heard behind me a great thunderous voice. Oh, blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels behind them, uh, the wheels beside them, and a great thunderous noise. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Let me read that again. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to the captives at Tel Aviv who dwelt in the river Chamar, and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. Okay, so he went in bitterness in the heat, it says, in the heat of my spirit. I want to talk for a minute about the language here of, of bitterness, the language used in both the Greek 
in the book of Revelation and also in the Hebrew there in e Ezekiel. So the scripture, the, the word, the language there in both, both contexts, the language is, is bitter. It's, it's um, of course, talking about bitterness. And in the Greek, it's, it's talking about to grow angry to grow harsh. It's talking about bitterness. There's, there's something that was taking place. Yeah, it is for the point to prophesy. It must come back up and you must prophesy. But there was something also that's taking place as the word is eaten, as they receive this true knowledge, as they, as they see deeper, as they see a little more complete about what's going to take place, as they see what is the very heart of God. Okay, in, the, in Ezekiel, when he says, you know, this about um, going off into the heat of his spirit and he, he went in his bitterness, that is the same thing he's talking about in a burning anger, in a heat, in a rage, in, in bitterness. There was something happening within him, even as he ate the scroll. So what is it? It is in, in part so that we can then prophesy um, what the Lord, uh, what the Lord is saying. This may be a little bit what will happen as we come to the true knowledge of who he is and we receive a word and we eat the scroll. It might be conflicting within us. It might seem to even anger us in some ways, perhaps anger our soul. Perhaps it is, it makes us angry to even see what will take place, the, the complexity, the gravity of what's coming and what will happen. Even maybe there's, this is just, you know, I'm just thinking maybe there's things that we'll look at within ourselves. Oh, wow, I, I'm not even worthy. I'm not even worthy. There are a lot of things that can absolutely take place as we receive uh, the word of God. Even understanding, looking back and understanding what was missed. There could be some of that. There's something here that's interesting in Ezekiel chapter 3. He says, So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. And the language is that there it was bitterness in my belly, and I went in the heat of my spirit, angry. Um, it's, it's describing this place of rage even. The word actually means rage. So what is, what is that? The next verse says, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. The hand of the Lord was strong upon me. There might be even anger towards what is seen, what we see coming, what we see happening. But we know that there is going to be both darkness and there's going to be a bright shining light. And in this hour, we must be brave enough to receive the truth. We must be willing to pursue it and to fight for it at all costs, to know the true knowledge and be able to eat that squirrel, to eat that word so that we might be able to prophesy, to let that back out. Because this is the hour where prophesying our new day, it's really the ancient day, but it is a, it, it's an ancient message prophesied in a new day. That's what I mean to say. It's a very ancient message prophesied in this new day and going to be executed in this time in history. And we'll prophesy it. Some will prophesy it. Those who are willing to uh, come into this place of um, receiving the truth. Uh, there will be, it, I, I believe it will be difficult at times. But I love that in Ezekiel 3, where it says, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Beautiful. In Revelation 10, it says, I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And the, that language there, became bitter, is the same, I, same meaning, I went in bitterness. But he said to me, you must prophesy again about many people, nations, tongues, and kings. There is a, a lot happening here in both these examples. And in this day, there is going to be a lot happening. We will be compelled to prophesy 
even as the prophet said, I felt it shut, uh, you know, it was shut up in my bones. That he wanted to get this word out, even a word of difficulty, even when we've seen something hard coming. But sometimes you see the hard coming, and you know what you do is you don't always prophesy only the hard. You begin to prophesy what God is doing. You prophesy according to His holiness. You see, that's one of the, the reasons I can imagine that it is difficult for prophets to receive a good, true word. Because we don't want to prophesy a word unless the Lord is going to do that in our heart and unless He has or is in the process of, um, of changing us and healing us and doing in us what we're prophesying is coming. Because we are part of the, the corporate body. It's both personal and it's corporate, always. So sometimes it's hard to hear a, 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 the, the full message and know that we are, um, we're looking inwardly at ourselves as well. There are things to be dealt with and the Lord has absolutely been doing that. There's a quietude that's necessary. There are a lot of things we can do to, to help ourselves along in this journey of the pro prophetic. Because a chaotic prophetic culture, that's, we already have had that and it didn't work. So there's going to be a handful that are going to prophesy those who ascend the mountain of the Lord with clean hands and a pure heart, looking inwardly going, whoa, okay. And even looking outwardly, looking far in the future and going, oh my. But God said, this is what he's going to do and I'm going to prophesy it. And he's going to do great things in the midst of a dark hour. And we're going to prophesy into those great things. We're going to prophesy in regards to Omega time where there will be many that shine like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, leading many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Many to righteousness. This is on behalf of, of a harvest, you see. The greatest harvest the world has ever seen. A latter revival. Zechariah 10 says, Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. We are asking for that. And we are going to prophesy according to these last days. The Lord is coming. <laughs> That's just absolutely the truth. I can feel the anointing here. He's serious about cleaning up this prophetic culture, cleaning up the prophecy, cleaning up our hearts so that we prophesy in, in sincerity, in humility, in reverence for Him, that we prophesy according to His design, that we are courageous to fight for the truth and prophesy the truth even if it causes our soul to be in a stir for a minute. But the Lord will settle us. And so we'll be settled. I'm going to just finish this off. I'm not going to have time to go through the, completely go through these 11 biblical principles. Maybe one day I will, but I'm feeling the pull of the Lord to read through Zechariah chapter 10. Um, I'm just going to read it and I'm going to leave that here and then hopefully I'm going to pray for you at the end here. Zechariah 10, I'm going to read every verse. So if you can open your Bible up to it, stick with me here and, and let's read through the scripture. You know, there's a lot of gossip that goes on, even in the name of exposing and bringing truth out. 
there's a lot of signs happening in the sky confirming things that have already been prophesied, confirming things that the Lord is doing, and those are incredible signs, and we'll watch for them. But in the coming days, it's going to be great, get greater. It's going to be, um, it's going to be different. Prophecy won't be like it's been. It's going to be sincere. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be like the prophets of old, but it's going to be in prophesying in time and in season. We'll be prophesying in that way, as even as they did in this kind of power with signs and wonders. But it's going to be in regards to this so make a time, this day we live in. That we are going to walk it out in our lifetime. That's just a remarkable thing. It's remarkable. Let's go ahead and read Zechariah 10 together. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain. Grass in the field for everyone. For the idols speak delusion. The diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wend their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. My anger is kindled against the shepherds, and I will punish the goat herds, for the Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his royal horse in the battle. From him comes the cornerstone, from him the tent peg, from him the battle bow, From him, every ruler together, they shall be like mighty men who tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle, and they shall fight because the Lord is with them. And the riders on horses shall be put to shame. I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them back because I have mercy on them. They shall be as though I had not cast them aside, for I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. Those of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their hearts shall rejoice as if with wine. Yes, their children shall see it and be glad. Their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord, and I will whistle for them and gather them, and I will redeem them, and they shall increase as they once increased. And I will sow them among the peoples, and they shall remember me in far countries. They shall live together with their children, and they shall return And I will also bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. And I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon until no more room is found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction and strike the waves of the sea. All the depths of the river shall dry up. Then the the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart. So I will strengthen them in the Lord and they shall walk up and down in his name says the Lord. This is the dimension and the level of prophecy that will come forth in Omega prayer. It'll come forth from the prophets that are uh, sincerely devoted to God and to the kingdom of God and devoted to Israel. This is the level of prophecy. This This is that place and this prophecy here to be released. There's redemption coming. The Redeemer's here. There's wholeness coming. There is um, revelation of the new day coming. And it's for you to receive. It's for you to prophesy. It's for you to hold on to and to believe for and to be courageous for. It's time. It's time to recognize the old is gone and isn't coming back. And the new is here available for us to prophesy so that we can walk into it and prophesy our new day. Prophesy the, those in captivity, out of captivity, that might, they might come in and build this new day with us. That's the dimension and level of prophecy that we're coming to. So I pray for you. I pray for you that you get this revelation 
and understand that we don't always like the prophecy we hear, the things that we see. We don't always understand them. Um, but we're going to prophesy according to the Lord's design. Sometimes um, it's going to, many, for many people, it's going to take a lot of courage to look inwardly. It's going to take a lot of courage and understanding even to prophesy in regards to Israel, in regards to the nations and uh, across the earth. It's going to take great courage. But I tell you, you will have that courage and you will prophesy according to the Lord's design. I share that with you. I leave that with you. The Lord is mindful of you. And I know many of you are in situations in your life and you're going, I just don't even know how could I be chosen with all I've done and all I've been through. Well, I'll tell you what, the Redeemer lives. He lives. The Redeemer lives. I would say, as we often say, oh, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy that died for you. I know a guy that gives you eternal life. I know a guy that he, that's your healer. I know a guy who is Omega. This is his hour. You're redeemed so that you can prophesy in this hour accurately. You can prophesy according to God's plan and not according to selfish agenda, fear, or anything else. It's time now. We have come out of the old and the new is at hand. It's right here. Behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it will come to pass, says the Lord. I bless you with this in Jesus' name.